Right, it's September 2016 and I'm sitting here with three times New Zealand spearfishing champion Russell George and Russell's an iconic spearfisherman that lives in Tairua and when I first joined the Bluefin Underwater Club Russell was the man then that we all looked up to and learnt from and he's got all sorts of interesting stories and like where did your diving start? Down on the farm in the creek in the creek, where was that, in the Wairapa? Down the Wairapa, about 1953. 1953 <laughs> in the creek at the Wairapa. So there you go, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's more of one of the more interesting places I've heard that somebody's learnt to start their diving. And what, were you shooting things? Uh, yeah, yeah, eels and, and things like that. And practising in the, in the cow troughs with um, gas masks that we bought off the army surplus store. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and, and you, did you, like, you would have been one of the guys that would have speared harpook around the wire wrapper? Yeah, I managed a couple down there and one, uh, yeah, one somewhere else, yeah. Like, and how big were they? Uh, well, the biggest one I got uh, was uh, at flat point at 75 pounds. 75 pounds, and it's flat point in the wire wrapper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 75 pounds, so that's about 35 kilos, 34 yeah. kilos, something yeah. like that. So big harpooker. Yeah. yeah, the other others were a bit smaller than that. Though. Yeah, and they're all free diving, of course. Yeah, yeah. Were they? Yeah. yeah. So that's free diving harpooker. You've shot three of them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what that's what learning to dive in the creek on the farm does for you. <laughs> <laughs> Teaches you to get great fish. There's there's also a legendary story there that you caught a, a marco by hand. Is that right? Diving? Was that you? No, um, it is a legend. If, if, uh, no. It wasn't you? Oh. I speared a Marco. Oh, you speared one. I All speared right. a Marco and, and put it in the boat and we had to vacate the boat because it went ape. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did a lot of damage and bit the fuel hose in half and things, funny things like that. And how and, big was it? Oh, it was, it was the, the jaws up on the wall at home. And, right. uh, and it wasn't that big. Yeah. But it didn't like me spearing it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and 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 with as three times New Zealand spearfishing champion, whereabouts were those? Do you remember where you took those titles? Uh, good question. Um, Wangaraya, uh, Hudianga, and um, oh, I can't think of the other places. The other ones, it's a long, yeah. long time. Ago. I can't remember mine, and I'm not as old as you, so there you go. So don't feel too bad about it. Yeah. Um, and like in, it, in your dive career, is there is there a diver that you remember that sort of set the standard for you that that you looked up to and learnt a lot from, or that was just a really amazing diver? There was a lot of amazing divers. There was and, lots, yeah. Lot, yeah. Lots of them. I, I wouldn't be prepared to name them. Yeah. Uh, at, at the time, uh, di diving was just getting off the ground. So you're all learning we together. We were, were foundation members of the Wairapa Club and, um, yeah. back in the 50s. Yeah. And uh, it seems a long, long time ago. Yeah. Is the Wairapa Club still... I'm um, not sure. Um, I don't get any newsletters yeah. if it is. Yeah. 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 Um, and we, do you remember when, because when I met you, it was on the blue, well I met you before, but when I sort of, uh, the few dives I had with you was over the blue, the, the bluefin era, the, like the yeah, bluefin that's right. club. Great, great scene, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and when did you start on the bluefins? Uh, just before 75, yeah, just be, about uh, 74, because I went to Peru in 75. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. I was new, I, and we moved up here in '73 to Tyra from the Wairapa. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I um, and so you went to Peru to the World Champs. Yes. Yeah. How'd you go there? I got 37th out of 110 or something. Well, see, so well up the ladder. Um, Bob Rose, Maggie got 30. No, I got 33rd. Sorry. Yeah. Bob got. 37th and I think Graham got 39th or something. Right, right, mm. yeah. Yep, see so you all in the 30s. Yeah, yeah. And, and where were you? Do you remember where you were in Peru? Because I've just been back there with a the New Zealand team a, a couple of years ago. Uh, 
started with a P, but don't ask me to pronounce yeah. it. Right south, right. south of Lima. Yeah, so it sounds like a the same. Out around where, where they've got the guano. Yeah, it sounds like a similar islands. area to where we've just been. Oh, okay. It is, it is. We've been to the same area because we went out to those islands and they were covered oh, okay. in birds and guano. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I so think the Spanish one, or the French one, oh, the French won, uh, won the individual yeah. there, uh, the Spanish team, I think, won the... Same. We've just had the Spanish win it there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's the same oh. sort of thing. Um, and one of the other things which is pretty iconic that I, I know you for is building guns. And uh, <laughs> you just got this piece. So this is a footloader that Russell made. And it's got copper handles. It's, this is where you load with your feet. And tell us a bit about the story that you were just telling me. That That's a 10 mil spear on this. You can imagine how much rubber he had on this to make it work. Well, uh, obviously I haven't uh, used it for many a year. But um, it was strictly a down on the farm sort of uh, idea. And... Uh, this, I, I built this um, as a result of uh, looking at other guns, which there weren't many of, actually. Well, you had nothing to go from, really, did no, you? Not like no, no, and, and, and we sort of um, built it up from there. I had a, an idea of putting a remote on the, on the back here, which I did, and uh, I happened to be competing in, in, in the East Coast Champs at Ma here, and I put my safety on there which stops you from pulling the trigger. Yeah. And I used to swim around with this hanging down, clicking the safety on and off. So the safety's making noise to attract the kingfisher. Yes, yeah, and, and tapping on your belt and all sorts of other things. And uh, in my excitement, I accidentally pulled the trigger and this piece of it, yeah. <laughs> the big copper butt or stainless steel butt, yeah. <laughs> Shot back and recoiled and broke two ribs. Broke his ribs. So, <laughs> so and that was the day before the day before the comp. <laughs> so it was pretty painful diving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's the story. I used to have two uh, seven eight or whatever that is. So equates. seven eight is that twenty mil? Yeah, it might be a twenty like mil that. rubbers. How many of them? Two. Two of those. Two on there, as much as I could pull back to here. And the bow, uh, the gun used to get a considerable bow in it with the mouth. <laughs> I bet you it did. I'd be worried about it snapping looking at that. And when it went off, it went off. Hell yeah. But I managed to um, capture uh, quite a few reasonable sized kingfish. Do you, do you know what your biggest kingfishes you've ever speared? Ah. Uh, well, well, visually, uh, I thought it was pretty big at about 80-something pound at one island. Yeah, 80-something yeah. pound. So yeah. high, high 30s, early 40 kilos sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. fish. Yeah. And was that with a gun like this or that gun? It might have even been that gun, mate, but, um, you know, a lot of water's gone under the bridges. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and did you use float lines or did you just use these reels? No, no, yeah, this is the winch. Just reel, just no the... float line? No, 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 no. Yeah, well, so... you, can, you can get a mountain of... Uh, yeah, you line, get a lot of line, line on there, line yeah. On there and, and, and what about that reel, Russell? Did you make that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's well, a handmade reel. You have to make things like that. And, and one of the features that we, we we thought was pretty good, and I think it still is, is a drop-off head, because we, we seem to land more kingfish with a drop-off head than we did with a straight shaft. Right, yeah. So yeah. Uh, oh, it's something that probably still applies. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. Drop-off heads, are, but they're a little bit more refined nowadays. Oh, I bet they are. Yeah, yeah, they're on lighter spears and things. But same <laughs> principles. You guys you guys were the pioneers, and as time goes on, people just refine it all. My yeah. brother was um, unfortunate enough to break, break his front teeth because we used to make them out of air rifle stocks. Oh, yeah. And we were shooting at a target on the clothesline. Out of the water. Out of the water. With a spear gun. Holding it, holding it. Don't like shoot this. out of the water with spear guns if you're listening to this no, at home. No, I agree, I agree. Yeah. Well, this was just kids down on the farm. Yeah. And it recoiled enough to break his front teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do it. No, no, <laughs> right. and, your, and Russell's two brothers are still alive, and they're both still doing a bit of diving. Oh, yeah. They live in, in Australia, um, yeah. in New South Wales, and um, they're still spearfishing there. I've dived with them as well. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a good been, scene over there. Yeah. Yeah, and it, the other thing that comes to mind with me is I swam a bluefins comp with you and a whole lot of other bluefins out at Flat Rock, and you had a great white come in. Oh, I did, yes. Yeah, you yeah. and Trevor Bodger. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
And and what happened there? Um, well, the, the, the white story is, uh, yeah, we, we, we had just started the competition and, uh, well, by about an hour or so, and we were swimming, trying, trying to swim away from you guys who went past us usually, but you were going one way and we were going the other. I don't think it was <laughs> quite like that at all. We are trying to give up with you. <laughs> and um, Trev was behind me, and we we'd both managed to nail a, a snapper each, which we thought was pretty good. Yeah. And um, we're at the southeastern corner of the flat, and uh, Trev and I used to dive for Terra Key on the end of that reef there. You're probably familiar with it. Yeah, so it's quite deep there, isn't it? It's 25 metres, 30 metres nearly, something like that? Yeah, 25, I think. 25 metres, yeah. yeah so. Because uh, one of the interesting things is, too, when I was cray fishing, I caught a shag in a pot set in that depth of water. On the bottom, is that On the right? bottom. Yeah. Shows you how deep the shags go. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, well, you know, a bit sad to see him stuck in yeah, there. But yeah. anyway, getting back to the to the white, uh, I dived down. Trev was behind me some distance. I dived down and I got about halfway down and all the bait fish just went Poof! And I thought, something funny here. I didn't spook them. You know, I got into free fall, yeah. and, and, and it wasn't something I'd done. And I, so I just stopped and started floating up, and I looked down, and there's this big shark, big shark, <laughs> biggest I've ever seen, and pro hopefully the <laughs> not yeah, too yeah. many bigger ones. And he came up to me. I don't know whether it was he or she actually came up to. Me. I floated back to the surface. And all I could do was just lie there with a the gun pointing towards it in case it got a bit of aggro. And it just veered off and dived down. And I thought, oh, good, it's going away. You know, I expected it to take my fish, which was only from here to the house away. Yeah, so this me. is on floats. We had no float boats in these days. No, so no, that's yeah, right. Everything yeah. was on a float. It was back there, and I thought, oh, he's bound to come back and take the fish, you know. But it didn't. <laughs> and anyway... Here's me thinking it's gone away, and after about five minutes, I see it coming back up again from a similar place. It must have just sort of gone down. And so you're still there, yeah. And I got a bit cocky at this stage, and I thought, well, I'll frighten it, because it'll eat before it gets the fish. Yeah, yeah. So it's cruising along very passively, very passively, you know, and it's, it's down at about 20 feet, and I'm on the surface, and I thought, well, if I dive down, and scream out right in this ear hole. <laughs> it'll, 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 that's what I thought. That was what was stupid, eh? But anyway, that's what you do when you're young fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was swimming down, and I had to swim quite fast because it was sort of sinking, and I got right behind its head and screamed out, you know, thinking, oh, take off. It never battered a bloody eye. Didn't, didn't budge, eh? Yeah. And I found myself just about settling on his back, and I was going from this way down to it to this, <laughs> this way. And it buggered off, and I never saw it again. Because you sat on the rocks for a bit and then decided there was more fish out there, didn't you? Well, I, I, I looked around to see where Trev was with his bundle of fish, and uh, I said to Trev, We'd better get out of here, mate, there's a big shark around. He said, oh, OK. So I swam over, and it was a bit of a swirl running, and, and I did a bit of a penguin trick up onto the rocks, which I was quite happy about. Yeah. And uh, Trev was a few metres away, and I'm sitting on there, and I'm sitting on the rocks saying, hurry up, Trev! And he's <laughs> going like the crap. <laughs> a couple of big waves picked him up and threw him at the rocks. But he fell back in the water and I said to him, and Trev has never forgotten me for this, hurry up Trev, I think he's in the water behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Just what you're doing, you're doing. And I thought he was going quick before, but he was, <laughs> he's got another gear. <laughs> <laughs> he just about gave up diving after that old trip. Yeah. We haven't seen much yeah, of him since. Yeah. Rotten trick to play on yeah. the guy. <laughs> no, I don't think that's what made him give up. But yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's all good fun for you know. The well, they're great, great stories, and, and the fact you've seen one and and what. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not keen to see another one, but no. I was very impressed with how majestic it looked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, magnificent beast. Yeah. Uh, the size of the eye and mm. and. 
It wasn't it wasn't hooning around threatening or anything like that. It was just come for a look inquisitive look at yeah. me and yeah. I had never touched the fish. He wasn't feeding. Yeah. No. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. 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 And <clears throat> and what about like you've talked about your harpooki you shot, is there and your big kangy. Is mm-hmm. there any other fish that stands out in your mind that you've got over the years are particularly you know like nothing nothing um not that I can think of, it's just a general run of the mill. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I might have nailed a, the odd species that nobody yeah. else was fortunate enough to get. Yeah. But that's all, nothing nothing big, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. And you were a crayfisherman out of Tyra for years, weren't you? Yeah. And, you know, and yeah. You say you, you... I, I backed off the diving a bit then, well, quite a bit then, because when you're out every day, yeah. You Last don't thing feel you want like to do going out the there. For, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was some yeah. basics of it. And I used to feel very, very envious of where I used to see you guys burning past. Yeah. Um, at 30 nights and me chugging along at seven. Yeah. And uh, you're having a lot of fun and I'm working my bum off. But anyway, that's the way it yeah. is. <laughs> but, but in there on the wall and inside, is um, you've got a lot of big mounts like pack horse and oh, red yeah. craze. Are they hand caught? Are they like they're diving? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're all yeah. diving. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. And how, do you remember what weights they are? Uh, yeah, yeah, the two the two packies we got um, at Stevens Island. Yeah, uh, up, out off Wangaroa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Twelve and a half pound. Yeah. And the, the red I've got in there was nine pound from from Castle Point. Nine pound, yeah. So they're yeah. big, yeah. 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 I've got big, I've got a big packie at the same place at Stevenson's Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. As a youngster, I've got a fifteen pounder out there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's obviously a good spot for big ones. Well, it must be. Mm. Yeah, my mate, my mate uh, Noel Roth. You may have heard of him. He was a remember uh, the name, yeah. What I want to remember for years, and uh, we both. He, I got two, and he got one, and we, we brought them down. They just about went rotten in the car with the heat and that going yeah. down yeah. back down to Marston. But anyway, we decided that we'd mount them, which we did. Uh, 35 percent formaldehyde injection and, yeah. and all that and uh, we put them up in the up in the shed for mm. 12 months or so till yeah. they all shrunk up and uh, we were both pretty excited and now uh, well I, I, I was a lucky one because mine survived Noel's uh, Noel's one uh, suffered a consequence of the mice getting inside it and eat it all out and they'll probably yeah. preserve themselves now I don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they taught, they taught the best, it, it all the inside, even the, the formaldehyde. Right. Room. Oof. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. The, the, other, the other interesting thing about Russell, too, is he's got two sons that both, both spearfish and a grandson. Um, and uh, Rex um, and Paul and Reese's grandson. And I've been lucky enough to dive with Paul over the years. And I mean, for me, yeah. in, in my dive career, I would say that Paul is one of the best spear fishermen I've ever had the pleasure to dive alongside. He was doing stuff that I couldn't do and um, you know we're at a similar sort of age and level in those days and yeah yeah it's been yeah, a great thing just, for oh, you to have your right. sons to dive with and, and a grandson. And, yeah 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 oh, yeah no it's, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't change anything. Yeah yeah yeah. Should, yeah yeah no it is good and you live in paradise. We're sitting here with this interview on the end of Russell's lawn, right on the S Street <laughs> at Tyra, and um, this is where he calls home. And um, it's a great place, and you're a great man. And oh, thank you. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to interview another iconic spear fisherman in New Zealand. Well, th- thank you for for the comments there. No, well, uh, uh, you, you deserve them. You, you, you don't realise how many people admire what you do. Oh no. yeah. Well, I, I, I got to learn how to dive through people like you. Oh, thank so, you. <laughs> you know, that's the thing we. We all like to think we're pretty good at what we do, but we all started from somewhere. And, and yeah. I started in the Bluefins young, and you were the iconic diver there that I just admired and couldn't believe how great you were. And, oh, and then diving I with don't your know son. About that. I was just lucky, but you know. I don't think there was too much luck involved. <laughs> he, he made his own luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you try, don't you? You do, you do. That's yeah. how you get good. So yeah. that's Russell George at 79, still out spearfishing and um, still enjoying the sport that we all love to do. Yeah, good. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Darren. It's a pleasure. Good to catch up with you again. It's a pleasure. It's great to catch up with you. All right. Thank you.